Our next topic is vasculitis. So itis of vascular, so inflammation of blood vessel wall. So if you have inflammation of the blood vessel wall, then you're going to get obviously non-specific symptoms overall of inflammation, and you can get organ ischemia because inflammation of the vessels is going to prevent blood flow to that organ. Now we're going to divide vasculitis into large, medium, and small. So large vasculitis, large vessel vasculitis hits the aorta and its major branches, including the carotids. Um, the small vessels hit the arterioles, capillaries, venules, and the medium vessel vasculitis hits everything else. So let's get into it. Let's get into large vessel vasculitis. The first one is giant temporal, giant cell temporal arteritis. And the key thing here is it's granulomatous inflammation of the branches of the carotid artery. Okay. We've I've I've put in a picture here of all the branches of the carotid artery. Um, they go up to the jaw, and they go up to the temple, um, they go up to the eyes too, which isn't shown here. And if you get inflammation to all of these, you're going to get symptoms um, that reflect all of those locations. Uh, first of all, the the clinical picture is it's going to be an older adult who is usually female, so older as in over 50 years old. So I mentioned before, if you hit the temporal arteries, you can get a headache. If you hit the if you hit this mandibular artery, you're going to get jaw pain while chewing. Um, that's classic. It's called jaw claudication. So they they have problems chewing because it hurts, and then oftentimes they lose a lot of weight because they're not eating. Next is blurred and impaired vision. Um, that's also a key key um, clinical feature here. Again, it's because of those. There's um, branches of the carotid artery that go to the eye. Um, and finally, there's polymyalgia rheumatica. This is not this is associated with this um, vasculitis, but it's not a part of not a not a symptom of the vasculitis. But there's off, they're often very associated. And if you remember, if you ever watched the MSK lectures, you would know that polymyalgia, or if you just break down the name, polymyalgia. So um. Rheumatic, so rheumatic, so it's kind of stiffness. It's proximal muscle stiffness, um, and it's and then you get often a little bit of weakness too. Um, the other key thing here is that they, this is an inflammatory disease, so you're going to get inflammatory markers. So ESR is inflammatory marker that's elevated, and if you do a biopsy of the temporal artery, you're going to see segmental areas of giant cells in intimal fibrosis. So that's that's where the name comes from, giant cell arteritis, because you're going to see giant cells. You're going to see fibrosis, and it's segmental. So you see, you take this whole artery, you're going to see giant cells here, and you're going to segment of no, no giant cells, another segment of giant cells here. So what are we going to do for these patients? Well, this is inflammation, so you're going to hit them with some anti-inflammatory stuff. Specifically, you're going to hit them with high-dose steroids. And you're going to do this even before biopsy to prevent blindness. So this is a big deal. You, you don't want to wait for this. Or if you wait too long, they can go blind. Remember, impaired vision is a symptom. So you got to hit them with steroids to treat this. All right, next one is Takuyasu arteritis. Um, this is inflammation of the aorta and its major branches. Um, the people you see this with is Asian females, um, younger, so less than 40. So I just remember Takiyasu, this Asian sounding name. Um, so it's Asian females, they're younger than 40. In contrast to the giant cell where you have older patients. And what you're going to see here is poor pulses in the upper extremities. Okay, um, This is called pulseless disease. And the reason why is because if you get inflammation up here, in these, in these branches, the major branches, these major branches go to the upper extremities, okay? So if you have inflammation, you're going to get poor blood flow to those areas. Let's, draw a bit. Let's get a better pen here. Inflammation, 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 inflammation. Less blood flowing to the upper extremities. You get poor pulses there. You're also going to get vague systemic symptoms. You're just going to get inflammation all over the body. You're going to get like fever, night sweats, weight loss. Again, it's an inflammatory disease. ESR is elevated. How do we treat this? You treat this the same as giant cell arteritis. And what was that? Remember, that was the steroids. So again, um, the classic, it's Asian, you, you tell by the name. These are younger patients, giant cells, older patients. All right, so next one, we're going to go to the medium vessel vasculitis. Uh, first one is polyarteritis and dota. First, ignore these pictures. Um, we'll, we'll get a look, get, to get to them later. So poly polyarteritis means there's a lot of arteries that are involved. Okay, and that's it's going to be reflected in your symptoms. You're going to get hit the renal vessels. You're going to hit visceral vessels, which are the stomachs. So you're going to abdominal pain, melanoma. Renal vessels, you get hypertension. We talked about how you, when you get blockage of the renal vessels, 
Remember that JG cells are going to sense decreased blood flow, and then they're going to try to increase blood pressure to get more blood to the kidney. Um, your neuro neurologic dysfunction, your general symptoms, again, vague systemic symptoms of fever, weight loss. The, the key thing that does not affect is it doesn't hit the lungs. Okay, In polyarthritis in the dose, so you do not hit the lungs. On histology, what you're going to see is something called, um, sorry, excuse me. What do you see? You see varying stages of inflammation. So that's pretty characteristic of this, of this disease. So earlier lesions will have uh, inflammation of the whole wall, transmural inflammation, and you can get fibrinoid necrosis. And then later lesions will have string of, of pearls appearance. So it's going to look like you can get fibrosis here, you can get fibrosis here, and the vessels of fibrosis here, and that looks like pearls. So you can have a string of pearls. Treatment for this, again, it's inflammatory. So you hit them with corticosteroids, you hit them with cyclophosphamide. Next is Kawasaki disease. So again, Asian name. So what are you going to see? It's going to be Asian patient. So it's going to be Asian children. And it's going to be less than four. And if you still can't get that in mind, just look at this Asian little boy. Little Asian boy. That's Kawasaki disease. There's a variety of symptoms that come with this disease. First aid has a nice mnemonic crash and burn that I use. Otherwise, you can just um, take a look at this. Um, again, you can get fever. Conjunctivitis, as you can see, the red eyes. You can get cervical lymph adenopathy. You have mucositis, so that can be either the this the lips. Lips are red, uh, inflamed. The tongue is red and inflamed. So that's the strawberry tongue is red, and then you can have a rash. So there's two types of rash. So first, it's a polymorphous, which is very. It's kind of like, um, I don't know. It's, there's varying appearances of it. It's a splotchy, kind of splotchy type of rash. Eventually, it turns to disquamatous, disquamating. So you can see here, disquamating, that the skin's peeling off here. Again, more disquamating. Um, extremity involvement, so that means your hands and feet. So you can see here, erythema of the hands. You can have edema, edema, erythema of the hands. You can get skin peeling, as we saw here. All right, so the treatment here is what you do is you give them aspirin, you give them IVIG. So this is an exception. Um, do you remember what happens? Do we ever give aspirin to kids? Usually you do not because you, you risk there's, um, you risk hurting, injuring their liver and their brain. Um, it's called Rye syndrome. But this is the only case where you can give aspirin to kids in Kawasaki disease. Um, and then the other thing you do is give them IVIG. Um, this binds to um, antibodies. It's, it's basically you use it for inflammatory diseases. So IVG, IVIG and aspirin are very key for Kawasaki disease. Finally, we have Berger disease. It's called thrombo. Another name for this is thromboangiitis obliterans. So what this is is it's a vasculitis involving. Do you know what part of the body? It involves dig digits. Okay. It's fingers, toes. And what, what's going to happen is you get, you get inflammation, you get reduced blood flow to the digits, and then eventually they're going to be enough, reduced enough blood flow to the digits, die, just get gangrene, and then they, they die, and then your fingers fall off by themselves. That's called auto amputation of your fingers and toes. So nasty, nasty stuff. Um, you often see Raynaud's phenomenon, so remember what that was. That was in the hands. It, you'll see like three different colors in the hands. So, you know, part of it will be red, part of it will be white, part of it will be blue. Um, and that's just a reflection of poor blood flow to the hands and exacerbated by the cold. So the, the people you see this in this burger disease is young men. And then what's the key factor for these men? The key factor is that they're heavy smokers. Okay. Heavy smokers, young men is burger disease. And the way you treat this is what do you do? You got to stop smoking it's easy enough. Okay. Stop smoking. You treat this. If you don't, your fingers fall off. All right. Now we're going to go to the small vessels. First one is granulotis. Again, ignore the pictures. The first first disease is granulomatosis with polyangitis, uh, formerly called Wegner's. I think they changed the name because he used to be a Nazi. He was a Nazi, so we're not going to respect that. Um, clinical features: lots of involvement. You have upper re upper tract, respiratory tract, lower respiratory tract, kidneys, skin. So upper respiratory tract includes perforation in the nose or perforation of the nasal septum. You can get cr chronic sinusitis of the sinuses. You're for the ears, you're going to have um, inflammation of the ears, otitis media. Um, this is a key because it's differentiating. And then uh, lower respiratory tract. Excuse me. Lower respiratory tract is like the lungs. So you can get coughing up of blood, uh, cough, um, shortness of breath. All that is inflammation of blood vessels to the lung. And then you can have um, 
inflammation of blood vessels to the kidney, the small blood vessels to the kidney. So if inflammation, you can get um, hematuria, you can get red cell cast, um, glomerulo nephritis. And then the other thing is skin, so palpable purpura. So what the heck is palpable purpura? Palpable purpura is this, okay? It's redness and it's palpable, which means that you can, it's vis, it's, um, it's raised, you can feel it. And purpura is, it's, um, what it is, it's the non-blanching red lesion. It's due to hemorrhage, hemorrhage of the blood vessels. So you have your blood vessel, let's change your color here. If it hemorrhages, that means red blood cells can leak out. So now you have red blood cells outside the vessels. So non-blanching, so blanching, a blanching um, lesion means that if you press it, the redness goes away. So that's like in a rash. If you have a red rash, you press on it, it turns white. That's because when you press on it, there's blood. There's, the rash is from extra blood in the blood vessels. But when you press on it, you're, you're squeezing all that blood, you're pushing it away. But if you have a hemorrhage, this is going to be non-blanching. You press on it, it remains red because you're pressing on it, but this blood is outside of the blood vessel, so it's just going to hang out there. Okay. Now the diagnosis here is there's a key antibody for this disease. Uh, I don't know if you've learned this before. Um, think about it. It's C. anca. So C. anca is this. This is what it is. C. anca, positive C. anca. And the way I remember it, there's a P. anca and there's a C. anca. C. anca is the one that looks like a lotus root. So this is a lotus root. And that's C anchor, okay? The way you treat this, again, it's an inflammatory disease. You hit them with steroids, you hit them with cyclophosphamide. Now, next disease is microscopic polyangiitis. It's very similar. It's pretty much the same thing as Wegener's, except for there's no upper respiratory tract involvement. Um, that's all. So I don't even it's, remember. It's the same thing as Wegener's. You have, you have the lower respiratory tract involvement. What was the symptoms? You can have coughing, you have um, coughing up blood. You can have shortness of breath. You have kidney involvement, so you can get peeing out blood. You can have red cell cast. And then uh, for the skin, again, we have that palpable purpura. So how do we diagnose this one? What's the what's the antibody that we test for? Um, that would be positive here. Remember, the antibody here will be P anca. So this is the one that doesn't look like a lotus. It's P anca. So next is uh, eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis. Another name for this is Churg-Strauss disease. Um, name tells you a lot already, so it's eosinophilic, so you're going to see eosinophils, you're going to see asthma, so those are two key differentiating factors, you have asthma, you have eosinophils, and it's, then it's, and it's a vasculitis, and it's Churg-Strauss. Again, you're going to see purpura, you're going to see purpura for all these small vessels, because you're going to be getting bleeding and hemorrhage in all the small vessels. Uh, the way you diagnose it is what antibodies is seen in this one. Again, this one is p anca. And uh, what other antibody will be increased is IgA, Ig, IgE, Ig. The answer is IgE. Okay. Remember, IgE is seen with these cinephils, so you're gonna have increased IgE. So finally, our last one is immunoglobulin A vasculitis. Another name for this is henoch shanlin purpura. Um, do you know what antibody is involved in this one? Antibody here is IgA. Okay. So IgA immune complex deposition, highly testable. Actually, it's in the name, so you should have known that already. Um, and this is associated with what nephropathy? IgA nephropathy. So very easy. Okay. There's a triad of symptoms here. Um, try to think about it if you can. Otherwise, I'm going to tell you now. Symptoms here are GI symptoms. Um, GI. So you're going to have abdominal pain. You can have you can have interception, which is when the the intestines telescope into each other. So with GI symptoms, the next one is arthralgias. Okay, you're gonna have joint pain. And then finally, what's the last symptom? This last symptom is skin. So again, I told you, all of these small vasculitis have skin, skin involvement with palpable purpura. Palpable purpura. So I just wanna emphasize that all these symptoms, there are a constellation of symptoms, but they all, all arise from the same thing. All arise to inflammation of the small vessels. You get leakage of the small vessels, you get you get blood leaks out causing the purpura, you're gonna get um, fluid leaking out edema, edema is gonna cause a pain in your joint, um, and then pain in your GI, in your abdomen. So that's it for a vasculitis. Um, and again, just small vessels. It's kind of easy if you if you end up comparing and contrasting. Because remember, poly -micros microscopic and polyangiitis is the same thing as Wegener's, except for there's no upper tract symptoms, and it's a P. anca disease. The um, Churg Strauss one up here, Churg Strauss is, is where um, the differentiating features asthma, eosinophils, and then you have the IgE, and then the and then the Henoch Shalom and Purple has that triad that you can remember, and it's associated with IgA. All right, so that's it for vasculitis.